What's up everybody, today we're going to talk about the best budget shoes I've tried in 2023 and therefore also the best budget shoes you can get heading into 2024. Before we start the video, just like I said in my top 10 video, I haven't tried every shoe this year, that released this year, so there could be a budget shoe that I just haven't tried and that's why it's not on this list, or maybe I have tried it and I just didn't like it as much. And another thing I want to say before we head into the list, I put a wider price range of shoes and also a wider array of shoes into this video because budget is very can mean a different thing for everybody. It's a very hard category to define how much exactly is a budget shoe. So we have shoes that go for under $100 and we also have some shoes that go up to $120 just so that you guys have a wider range of shoes to choose from just depending on your budget. So let's get straight into the video and start with the first pair of budget shoes that I really like. It's also the cheapest pair on this list and it's the Yannis Mortality 3. It goes for $90, but you can get them on sale almost everywhere, usually for around $75. So that's really a very nice price for a solid performance basketball shoe. Compared to the other shoes, top tier shoes I tested this year, I didn't like them as much, but I liked them way more than the Yannis Immortality 2. I really didn't enjoy playing in those. They didn't have enough support for me and also the cushion felt way too stiff for my needs. And I feel like they really did a good job and improved on that on the Immortality 3. The cushioning setup feels way comfier and way softer. I don't know if they changed up the foam compound or whatever they did, but it worked. It feels way nicer. Also, the forefoot feels like it has just enough impact protection. In my opinion, this is the perfect shoe for youth basketball players, for younger people playing. They don't need to spend that much in shoes. It's a cheap shoe and it will really give you good money's worth. Also, the traction performance was very good. Solid performance, no issues whatsoever on dust and on courts. They were good to go. And I think they will also be all right for outdoors as the rubber compound feels pretty hard to move, pretty stiff. So I think you should be good with them outdoors. The next pair on this list is a pair I haven't played as much as with the other pairs yet. It's Puma Court Rider Chaos. They come in at $100 retail, but they are also pretty much on sale everywhere right now. I've seen them go for as low as $65, which is even lower than the Immortality, but just because retail is $10 higher, they are on the second place on this list. What do you get from them? You get solid traction performance, solid cushion performance, solid support, and solid materials. Really, really solid performer from Puma. There's not much that they do extremely well, and there's not much that they do disturbingly badly, so to say. Um, there's a few downsides. One is the weight. They're pretty heavy. They're pretty much the heaviest shoe on this list today. And one more thing I noticed before break-in, they do have a little bit of heel slip. So just watch out for that. You need to tie them really hard. Maybe try runner's knot just so that your heel doesn't slip out. In my opinion, that's because the form of the heel area or essentially where your foot, the collar, the ankle collar, where your foot sits in the shoe, it's not really the shape of your typical foot. Um, if you know what I mean, it's very like egg shaped even and on other shoes like with the Immortalities, there's a bit of a wider array so you have a bit more space for your ankle to get in there and here it just takes some time for the materials to confirm to your feet and to mold to your foot so to say and then you will have a nice fit and also the lockdown will be good because there's a rigid heel counter, you've got a lot of lace loops so they will lock you down but it just takes some time so don't just watch out for that, don't be concerned if you play with them and that happens at first, they will get better. Next up, we have a pair that was also on my top 10 best basketball shoes of the 2023 list, which is the Rigor AR1 Austin Reeves first signature shoe. And in my opinion, this is almost the best pair you can get on this list as they are $100 and you get top tier performance. The other shoes that are coming, they also have really nice performance, but these are the cheapest. So that's probably my personal favorite of the budget shoes I've tried. Why do I like them so much? The traction performance is really good. The translucent colorway picks up a little bit more dust than the solid rubber colorways I have. So maybe if you play on dusty courts, get a colorway with a solid rubber. The Iceman colorway that Austin Reeves wore in the Christmas games uh, last week, they will release soon at Kickscrew. So they have a solid rubber also, maybe you get them. Really dope colorway as well. And the cushioning setup is minimal, similar to the flow setup of the Prairie line. Minimal, but very, very good. And the upper and the materials confirm to your feet they take some time to break in but then they do get really soft and will confirm as i said and the support is also very good good nice heel counter a lot of lace loops reinforced here with some flywire cables just a very very good performing shoe for just hundred dollars 
and as an extra bonus you get a selection of really really nice colorways for the next pair we're moving up in the price range we got the weight 808 free not the ultras that were on my um, honorable mentions list for the top 10 shoes the regular version they are cheaper they're 119 dollars and they also offer top tier performance you get a drop-in midsole with a boom pad which is where weights most premium cushioning in the forefoot so it's really nice that you get the most premium cushioning even in their budget models and you also get excellent track performance these are really really good probably the best traction performance out of all the shoes on this list and they are definitely also an option for outdoors as they use a tough OS rubber they call it which is where weights outdoor rubber also material support and materials are also very nice good nice rigid heel counter you have a shank plastic shank plate on the outside and you have a carbon fiber shank plate in the drop-in midsole i'll put a close-up into the video so that you guys can see that and as i said the materials nothing crazy but they do the job very very well it's a mesh material very soft will confirm to your feet feels very nice around your foot and they remind me a lot of the kobe 9 or the kobe 11 elites and therefore they're on this list a bit more expensive than the other shoes but really really nice performance as i said in the intro of the video some shoes are a bit more expensive but the performance really is way better if i have the money i would choose these every day of the week over the immortality free they're available at wayofweight.com i'll try and put a link into the description next up we got another pair from way of weight they also come in at 119 dollars and it's the way of weight shadow 5. this is my first time trying the shadow line and i was really impressed just from the shape of the shoe, they remind me a little bit of the Jordan 36. And those were a crazy nice performer for 2022. I think everybody knows about that. Why did they remind me of them? A little bit the overall shape of the shoe and it's kind of eclipse plate thing in the midsole they have here or on the outsole. And are they as bouncy as the 36s? No, but are they a budget version of the 36s? Yes. You have also a triple cushioning setup. You have Linings Cloud Plus Foam, they call it in the midsole and you have a very thin drop-in midsole but it's a full-length boom drop-in midsole so also again where weight's most premium cushioning in their budget shoes which is just really really nice from way of weight that they're giving us the best tech they have in their cheapest shoes the support on them was also very good as you can see it's a high top that doesn't necessarily mean that the support is better but you just get a lot of lace loops that can really keep your foot locked in so that can also help there's no heel slip whatsoever which has been an issue on some of the shoes on this list and the materials similar to the materials of the 808 free mesh upper takes almost no time to break in very soft as you can see here and will mold to your foot perfectly very pleasant experience playing them and what i like especially about them is the heel area is really padded it's really comfy you have a lot of achilles pillows here or heel pillows and that just feels really nice playing in them and for the second to last pair in this video we have the nike jar one these are also a really nice performer for 120 dollars depending on colorway these are 130 if i'm not mistaken i got them from the dunk shop and they also have some other colorways available if you want to cop them you'll find links in the description box where you can get all of these shoes now back to performance great performer for 120 dollars really good traction performance i have one other colorway where it took some time to break in the traction at first it was sliding and i thought like what's going on everybody's saying that these are great and then after a few sessions they got really good as everybody was saying and these were good right out of the box i don't know if there was just a difference in rubber compound maybe the others had a little bit of dust on them because they were sitting on the shelves for some time i don't know it just took some time to break in the cushioning is surprisingly nice you have four foot uh, air zoom unit and the heel is just foam but also the heel stepping comfort is very nice the insole is really thick materials nothing crazy as with the other pairs in this video a mesh upper it's a little bit stiff at first so these probably take the longest break in sometimes you might have to break in the traction you definitely have to break in the upper and the materials after that they really provide you with a one-to-one -one comfortable fit and they will mold to your foot and the support features is also top tier great heel lockdown and also the lace loops go higher up like i said with the shadow 5 really lock your foot into the shoe and the materials are thick enough for lateral containment last but not least the last pair in this video we go over to new balance it's a new shoe they released this year it's new balance hezi low and they also come in same price as the jar ones 120 dollars and they offer really solid performance in my opinion traction performance was very good no issues even on dusty cores they were 
really sticking to the floor and doing a good job. Dust pickup was also minimal. The cushioning setup is very nice. It feels similar to the cushioning setup of the two-way volume three from last year. It's not as soft as the volume four. It's New Balance's fuel cell cushioning. But as I said, it feels similar to the volume three. Very nice, low to the ground setup with enough impact protection for heavy landings or hard stops. The materials, as I said with every other pair in this video, a soft mesh upper needs almost no break in in comparison to the jar ones. They good to go right off the box. You don't need to wear them a couple of times before they start to perform well. And the support features are also there. Overall, a really solid performer. What I think is really interesting about this colorway is that you have those little Velcro straps that you can put onto the shoe or even on the side. You can take them off here and customize the shoe, so to speak. And they even come with some extra Velcro straps out of the box and you can put a 2023 or some New Balance logos or even a basketball court on there, which I think is a pretty cool detail. To summarize, these are my top budget shoes of the year that I've tried. I know that one pair you'll probably comment about is the Nike Precision 6. I haven't played with them, I've never tried them, that's why they're not on this list. I heard good things about them, but I also heard some bad things. And I don't want to put them on the list if I haven't tried them myself. I always try to give you my opinion from playing with the shoes myself and from testing them as a professional basketball player in my practices and if I like them a lot in my games as well. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, leave a like, comment your top pairs, comment the pair I missed and let me know which videos you want to see next from me. Have a good one and see you next time.